it's first of all that's that's a draining event period i wanted to go back to why the 800 is at the very end i've always wanted to know i just feel like that's just cruel because if you do it if you do it before like imagine trying to long jump after doing an 800 like it has to be the end because you couldn't do anything at least why do we have to do an 800 period that's true (laughs) why no i'm with you can we just make it a 400 which is still hard but at least it's one lap they have another two. Hell, like <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Well, some, something more fun. Let's let's talk about your signature lurk. Let's get into let's get into the hair. Like you don't have to make someone someone earlier was like no fro. They were upset. Oh, I missed that. Sorry, that. Guys. Yeah, yeah that sometimes good. it's too much and it's hot and I need to get it out of my face. And that's how and that was been. my question for you. Pro. I, I, love it. I had it written down because I cannot compete with my hair. My, like my hair doesn't, my hair does what it wants to do. And I, I always think that if I was to compete with my hair down, I would get over a hurdle and it would just be like, you can't see blindness. <laughs> how do you, how do you compete without a ponytail? Because I need to know. I don't know. I think it's, um, like it's grown over the years. So when I first started wearing it out, it wasn't that long. And so it didn't really get in my face. And I think over the years I've just gotten used to it because even now, like I haven't had my hair cut since last year and my bangs are long, like in pictures, they're like right here. So I'm just having to push them behind my uh, ears, but I don't know. It's just over the years as it's grown, I've become used to it and I don't think anything of it. And a lot of people are like, you would run faster if you pulled it back. I'm like, what my else? Mom, when I first started running, she would braid my hair. She would braid my hair in the front, and then like we'd put it in a ponytail. But she was like, yeah, so you'd be aerodynamic, and the wind would just <laughs> right through the braids. <laughs> yes, but it doesn't make that much of a difference. And I've so many people DM me that like you might have won your race if your hair was pulled back, and it's like I don't think I would have. DMing so, you, I, Corey's favorite line is get out of my dms from your couch you could never do what i do so just like you advice. might have won the race if you were in it but you weren't because what okay <laughs> me and my hair exactly. would be fine. fine exactly okay. off topic but you said you haven't cut your hair in a year and you still have this perfect curly cut without cutting your hair in a year yeah it's still yeah i see this lady in dallas and she does a great job so it's still holding Hi, the yeah. shape it's just longer and I need a little relief on the eyes because I the hair does get in the way sometimes, but I just kind of put it behind my ears now. I stay cutting my hair. My curls know if you don't act right, snip snip. <laughs> I've always wanted long hair. Like if my hair was the length of yours, I might have to pull it back or at least the top, but I haven't made it that far yet. So we're we're pushing like right here. You can get there. Yeah. <laughs> Hair used to be terrible, and it's been a journey. It's been a journey, but oh, mine too. I used to straighten it all the time. So, Same. and I used to think I had wavy hair. No, girl, it's just heat damage. It's heat damage. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yes, people I went to college with, like freshman year, that were like seniors at the time. They're like, you look so different because I didn't. I used to always wear my hair straight, and when I did wear it curly, it was like these long heat damaged curls. And so it, it does look very different than when I first came to college. Well, I, I love it. I'm a fan of it. I love the color. Thank I love you. To switch up with the color. She, she I, gives, it's versatile. It's great. Yeah. Thank so speaking of the hair, can you tell us a little bit about Fear the Fro? Yeah. So again, I used to always wear my hair straight, but my older sister actually started wearing her hair natural first, like out of our household. And I was like, oh, I, I could do that. Like I, I, I could run with that. So I started wearing it out at practice and one of our trainers at Arkansas at the time, she was a GA. And she started saying that just randomly, like fear the fro, fear the fro. And I kind of just latched onto it. I started dyeing it red. And then, you know, some purples came. I did blue every once in a while, but it kind of just took off from there. Um, It's kind of funny because now she was a student at the time. She moved away, got her big girl job, and now she's back as the head trainer. And now I'm professional track athlete, fear the fro, like merch and stuff. And so it's kind of cool to see, but it's really just, you know, trying to get people to embrace their natural hair 
wear it as it is. Don't let people tell you that your hair is not beautiful as it grows out of your head. And just don't be so afraid to wear it. Like, with your natural hair growing out of your right. head. Like, we can rock the natural and run fast, be cute, in the office, out the office, on the track. Like, it don't matter. I just feel like this conversation smells like <laughs> shea butter and um, <laughs> coconut oil and tropical fruits. Like, I love it. Because, you know, I'm a big advocate for pearl, natural, mainly because I'm lazy. Um, but I, I just love to see it because I feel like a lot of a lot of times, I don't know, growing up, I always strained my hair for race day. Like, that was part of my routine. And now I think it's so important to rock your natural hair, especially, like, with the platform that we have. Like, one of the, the greatest moments of my life, win world championships. And this guy tweeted me, and it was, like, his daughter standing in front of the TV while me on the podium and she has her hair and she's like looking at my hair. And I was like, this is why, this is why you need to like tell kids it's okay to be you and how your hair goes out it's, is beautiful and it's perfect. Right. Absolutely. And I love it. Yes. Also- when people send me those pictures, it's like, it does something to you. And those yes. pictures of little kids and, you know, cause that's what we want to encourage them to do that. And, be an inspiration for them. So it's always good. Absolutely. And to the fans watching, um, in order to support Talia, you may have to refresh the feed, but we have Talia's store down at the bottom. So you can shop Fear the Fro. People are always asking how to support the athletes and support our entrepreneurial endeavors. Yeah. And so we want you to support Talia at Fear the Fro. I'm going to have to go get some oh, things yeah. myself. Or slide into her DMs. Ask her for her Venmo. Send her $1,000. I don't know. Support her. <laughs> support is support. Like, <laughs> Thank you. Send, send black women. Send a black woman some money today is all I'm saying. Send her some money today. Um, <laughs> but, okay, I had, a, I had a great time. Is there anything else we need to discuss? Because I think it's time to pull on our next Yes, but I had so much fun talking to Talia. Likewise, if there's anything else you want to say, if we didn't ask you something or... Uh, I don't think way. so. I'm ready for track to start. Like, I'm ready for track. Okay. I need track. Yeah. The Simone Biles thing hurt my heart when I woke up this morning, but you know, I'm ready I'm ready to see some track. So I'm excited to cheer on to you today. Even if it's in the house, that's okay. <laughs> but, well, we loved having you. Um, and now I think we're going to pull on Jessica, our next guest. But we wish you guys. Guys a great recovery. Stay hydrated. Yes. Stay ma'am. moisturized. Yes. Thank you. That's, that's, yeah. not here yet. that's okay. We'll, that's okay. We, we have other. If you want to stay and hang out with us, that's cool too. We're gonna talk, we'll, we'll just talk about our next topic until Jessica gets here. Okay. okay. Or if Jessica doesn't come, you're just going to be. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank and- you. We'll see you bye around. Bye. Come back later on in the week. Maybe you'll yes. give us your takes on the half. You know. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I'll be tuning in all week. Okay. Awesome. Bye, bye y'all. Wait, this is what Track Girl Summer is about. It's Track Girl Tuesday. Oh, I like that. I forgot that it was it Tuesday. Tuesday. I have no idea what day it is. We have been just going. Just because Jessica is here. Hey, they Jess. lied. <laughs> Jessica, they try to make it seem like you were on time, like you weren't coming in. When you were supposed to be here, but you're here. She's here. But while while like we're while we get her loaded up, yeah. I will do a little intro about her because Jess is my fellow 400 meter diva. Hey girl, hey, I see she's coming up on the screen. Hey, she is a uh, Ohio native, um, Texas A and M Aggie. Boo, SEC. <laughs> we was in a Big Twelve when I was in school. Dang, that date me. <laughs> but uh oh yeah, that's right. You were Big Twelve. Yeah, I have that here. You are a sixteen time All American, Big Twelve, right, sixteen. Sixteen of them thanks. Get into it. Uh <laughs> Big Twelve and NCAA champ at four hundred meters and also a Bowerman winner. Jessica Beard, my teammate. Can I tell you the first time at Jessica? <laughs> Jessica was on my first team. I made juniors at like 16 so I was like the I was one of the youngest girls on the team it was like me and Ash Perkins and Jessica like took me under her wing and I just remember telling my mom I was like yeah there's this girl she's so nice and she's just so fly and she had she had the American uh, flag on her nails and she was like yeah so when I'm in the blocks I can just be like boom and I 
<laughs> that sounds like Jessica. And I and my dad was like, Jessica has this muscle on her on her on her thigh. It's like a square. He's like, you need to keep working till you get that. And I was like, yeah. I she's always been body goals for me. Always. We gonna get into that. We gonna get into that. Uh, so how you feeling, Jess? I'm feeling good. You know, just trying to train to a certain point. So I'm ready for a break, spring break. I'm ready for summer break. I'm ready. I'm ready for that right. before oh, school starts. <laughs> oh, where are you? Um, I have one semester left of grad school at A and M, so and so I'm trying to get it done in the fall because it's also in the offered only in the fall or the summer. So I'm like, okay, I'm trying to just get this last semester done, and it starts like August 30th. So I'm like, I don't know when I got to train to, but I'm just trying to. I'm hoping I got a week or two in there where I can eat what I want and do nothing so yeah <laughs> okay so are you in college station right now no in- I'm in DC right now oh okay. I'm training up here in DC my coach is in Tokyo with some of my training partners uh we have some other coaches back there but uh this is closer to home it's only like five hours from Ohio so okay Okay, so I wanted to ask how you became a 400 meter specialist. Like, when did you start? Did you start out at any events? Any other events, rather? Did she freeze? Do we need to freeze to refresh I our feed? I don't think. Feed? I think it's her. Uh oh. Is 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 she frozen for you guys, guys? Can you guys see her? Or is it us? <laughs> Mike says she frozen. Frozen. <laughs> Should I try refreshing our feed? Um, I think maybe she needs to because it's it's her, not us. No, um, we were doing so good. Okay. Hopefully she'll be back. In. We'll bring her back once she gets. Um... This is our first time actually like bringing guests in, so yeah. like bear with us. Someone said I never seen Jessica move this. Me either. Same. Same. Um, that's hilarious. Um. Well, I guess. All right. Until we get her back up on the screen, you want to jump into some of the other things that we had planned to talk about? Yeah, I want to talk about Tokyo and the money, 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 money. <laughs> Wasting money. all this money. I don't know if it's a waste. I just want to know where the money is going. Because, so this is the most expensive Olympics of all time. Mm-hmm. You were you were looking up some stats on like the numbers, and it's written in the thing that you're holding, <laughs> so you can tell it. So... The Olympic Games in Tokyo ended up costing $15 billion, um, three times the original budget. They projected it to be $7 billion, and that was a part of their pitch um, to, what do they call it? The IOC. When No, when the cities pitched to like- To get the, the to bid. The bid, thank you. That was a part of their bid. Wanda got the money for some. Wanda shirts are coming soon, guys. We're working on it, so- <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so they projected the Olympics to be seven billion dollars in Tokyo. Um, and from what I was reading, there's always a discrepancy with like the projection of what it's going to cost because it's always a projection and it always ends up being over budget. So in 2020, it came out to be about 11 billion or 13 billion, some somewhere in there. But with the postponement, added another two billion dollars. I'm trying to figure out where this, like, I know y'all built some pretty stadiums. Where is the, why, why the cardboard beds is what I'm trying to figure out. Because they were trying to be sustainable. Japan is one of the countries that, like, they're really, like, sustain, they, like, they recycle, they compost, they. I get that. But I'm saying selfishly, as as an athlete, right? And I feel like that was a lot of the, like, news coverage, too, that, like, oh, they built these beds to um, discourage athletes from having, first of all, they don't get cardboard it. beds ain't gonna stop nobody. <laughs> but the cardboard beds had nothing to do with COVID. Like, those were already in production before COVID. But all I'm saying is, like, as an athlete, right, biggest biggest performance of my life. I don't know. Maybe I would like a good night sleep. I, I would like to sleep on a bed that my that you know has a little sturdiness to it, uh, like a nice mattress. I don't. Disagree. And so my thing is with, with fifteen, and I like I feel like there's ways to like find uses for those beds. I understand they're trying to like 
eliminate waste. But at the yeah, same time, like back. a f- fifteen point four billion, was it was part of it going to the athletes' experience and? still cardboard i don't care if you put it this way that way or another way flip it upside down all or put the thing now flip it and reverse it it's still it's still a cardboard bag we're, we're gonna get hit for copyrights because <laughs> you out here missy ellie in it missy ellie the, you know who i'm trying to say uh oh looks it's like good. we're still having trouble getting jessica Sister, on. come back to us i come need back you to me um but yeah i'm just like if the money's going to the stadiums, and I know, like, they didn't know there wasn't going to be any any fans, but... That's a whole other thing that, like, we'll get, I yeah. would be curious to see. And we'll get into that after this, because it's going to go, but... And I saw Victoria said that they look uncomfortable. We're all saying they look uncomfortable. Have we spoken to any athletes in the village? How do they feel? Here's here's the thing. I've been t- speaking to, like, like um, Corey McGee said that she's fine, um, but Corey McGee is a distance runner. Like, I always wonder about, like, you have throwers, right? Ryan Krause once told me that when, because you know, Europe, they have them little skinny twin beds. Twin and he beds said, we he just, he together. hugs it. He bear hugs it so he doesn't fall off as he sleeps. And so my thing is, what cardboard is supporting Ryan Krause? These, and these, these basketball dudes, like, and you can't. The Japanese, all I'm going to say is the Japanese. The throwers have real beds. Very, very resourceful. The throwers have real beds. Oh, but I'm a big body girl. Okay, first of all, oh, she might look like Slim Snake, but I'm big body. I need a bed. I need a bed too. How you gonna? Oh, that's not that's, fair. That's discrimination. No, I don't know what it. <laughs> no, I'm gonna need a big bed. I'm a big girl. Oh, I gotta look into that. I don't need a queen or anything. Um, but like, I'm gonna need. Uh, Allison brought over the Tempur Pedic pad and put it over. <laughs> And that's you know, and that's like, the no. bougie things. <laughs> oh. Allison came over with the memory foam and put it over her mattress and was like, "I'm not fooling with y'all. I'm not mad at it though." No, I like, think you've been on the circuit for a while though. You start to learn your own little secrets. And the other thing is like, okay, like because of COVID, you have to fly over five days before. So like, jet lag is very real because we can't do a camp. Well, although I don't know, why. I don't know. True that is though. See, we going off script. This, well, you, this I never know, goes. You, USATF said. USATF, we, I don't understand. Like we always go all out for camp. USAT and and I'm gonna tell you this because I actually did some of the uh, like communications relations things where like they have been building our camp in Narita since like. 2016 yeah and i went over with my coach to do some relation stuff with the community because it's like team usa is coming over to tokyo so you know we're building really like all of these are the behind the scenes of like how these things happen every year like we don't just end up at the world championships end up at the games like it's years of preparation team usa put money into narita's facilities because the facilities are being set up for team usa to come to tokyo for the olympic games and team usa just canceled the and and i don't want to say it just canceled because it's covid COVID. is a great reason to cancel things but i'm just like blown away covid is a great reason to cancel things in your daily life if you don't want to go out with your friends if you are just like i don't feel like covid I've been using it to stay in the house. Right. Okay. Sorry. No, you're you're absolutely right. But I'm just blown away at the fact that Team USA threw away all that money. Not saying rightfully or wrongfully so, but I'm blown away because we usually have one of the best training camps and I'm seeing other countries doing it because from what I was told, you can only enter five days before your event. And but I'm seeing other countries having their camps that I'm like, why did Team USA do us like and that? And if all countries need a camp, Team USA needs a camp because especially these, for the these relays. Yeah, these like come on, like we never, we never, yeah. we never ha- know who our relay team is going to be. Yeah, which means we have never practiced these handoffs hardly ever, and especially in the Papa John P- Panera bread, we haven't been able to be like, oh, come do these. Come, come to Texas. We're- Papa John and Panera is not paying us. So I need for you to stop blowing them out, okay? Blowing them out. You know who I mean. They should pay me. Actually, actually, I don't want Papa John. I don't think. Money. I don't I think don't they want to be compared money. to the virus anyway. Well, I don't like Papa John. 
Hey, hey, hey. Anyway, <laughs> I that but that's like Hi, outside looking in. I think that is just Justin Forsett. Hey, Justin. Um, that is some information that I will have to like do some research on. Like, what was the true reason behind canceling Team USA's uh camp? Because I'm seeing other countries doing it. Uh, track and field was told you can't. I mean, there was no Team USA track and field athletes in the uh, opening ceremony. Yeah. But other countries had their, um, my guess, without doing any proper research or asking the questions, because I hate, like, saying things and then having to come back and be like, guys, I was wrong. So this is my educated assumption, is that Team USA is so large that it was kind of like, okay, whatever teams are already there, because I imagine maybe Tokyo put, like, a cap on how many athletes could be in the opening ceremony. I, I, that would make sense. But I also feel like, okay, if we don't go to, because we weren't going to Tokyo, we were doing our camp. Like, forget the opening ceremonies. Like, even if there was a cap, you should send your, four, we should have sent our 4 by one team one to do to handoffs. handoffs. I agree. I do we, agree with that. We need, like, Ralph Mann doing the, because you know how he does, like, the in and out as far as, um, to make sure the stick's moving at, at the, at the, what am I trying to say? Keep the, the stick, stick moving, moving at the same, at the highest velocity as possible. Mm -hmm. Just because back, we don't have control producer, over putting. Yeah, They're our producers are down. working on it. They're texting us, so and like, letting us know. Uh oh. Um, but <laughs> I feel like y'all should have or done a done a. Hey, we're gonna meet in New York. And maybe LA, they did. And maybe they did. We'll, we we're on the team. We don't know. I'll find out though. We'll find out. We'll we'll we we have a couple bowls and. We have a couple uh -oh. moles on the team. You so, guys know my little guy. Um, yeah, I just think that what event other than track would you to compete in if you could badminton? Um, I I actually wouldn't mind beach volleyball. She's gonna show a little little peaches in the back. Um, I actually really like volleyball, but I, I, I like volleyball in gym too. Um. But I'd be a baller. In gym class. I'd be, <laughs> Notice I said gym class. I'd be out here. I'd be out here. Dunking on them. Because you know I'm 5'9". Yeah. Have you watched, um, I, I hope I say this right, dressage? No. Where you may, I don't know if you're... <laughs> it's like the horses are like dancing. Oh, yeah. They be crip walking. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. I do like that. <laughs> So what if, <laughs> Tip -toeing did I say it right, Bob? <laughs> so I play bingo every Friday, and one of our friends in there, Tanya, we were, I was telling her about, you know, we're doing this. Make sure you guys tune in. And she was like, I see Jessica's back. Maybe we'll get her back on. She was like, y'all, dressage. I watch it every Olympics. And she sent me this link, and I was like, oh, my God. We're not, I, like, I love indoor volleyball. I used to play indoor volleyball. And I used to play softball is actually the reason why I started running track. Um, oh, really? Yeah, and I'm glad that it's back in the Olympics. Um, I, you know, I have ADHD, undiagnosed. And so softball was just too slow of a sport for me. Mm -hmm. um, and my mom was like, <gasps> is she back? You got action? Hey! She's back! Okay, Worth thank you. Worth the Bye. wave. <clears throat> you got Hello there. there. Hello there. <laughs> <sighs> not really right, sure let's what pick happened. Up where we left off. Where okay. We, leave off? Uh, we were talking about how you got into the 400. Yes. Um, well. I don't feel like people pick that event. I feel like that event. No, event the event picks pick, you. It picked me. Sure. No one ever is like, <laughs> I want to die for a laugh. Yes. Well, you know, I didn't start running to the ninth grade. And so, um, for me, I literally did every. I never ran track, but they told me it's going to help me with basketball. So I'm like, oh, yeah, because ball is life. Like, whatever's going to help me with basketball. And um, I really had to go through a series of events and learn, like, you're not really that good at this. Like, I first started with 100, and I started in, like, lane two and ended in, like, lane seven. So, you know, they were hot. Like, this is my, I'm just going across the lanes. Wait, like, no, no. Wait. Run that back. Run that back. <laughs> That's Tokyo drifting. Yes. How did you look? I just naturally I know, gravitate right? to the Wait, outside. No, you're a too old for that, right? Like if you would have told me, I never ran. But I never I mean, ran. So 
that's my natural trajectory to like go go right go to the outside of the lane you do the turn left everyone knows it's run fast turn left i was on a straight though i was on a straight so like you just <laughs> but like i have to think like i ended in like three four seven I'm, you know, they were mad at me for sure. And I'm I mad at you. Too. I knew that wasn't my okay. event, so the hundred was out. Oh, the hundred was not your event. Then I, they had me do the eight hundred, so we skip. You know, they. So I go through the line, and they're like, "Oh no, you have another lap." Excuse you. I am. Uh, so I did the other lap, and I was like, "I don't really like this." And then uh, I did the four hundred the next day. And I ran 64, but they said I did same arm, same leg the whole time. I don't know. I, Wait, I don't so know. You out but here. That's not even what, what, Yes. Jessica. I'm just letting you know how I got there. So out of all my said, scenarios, she, that was the best from one. The bottom. <laughs> and now I'm here. So that's how I got into the 400. Really didn't like it. Um, but that was my best event. And, you know, I won state my freshman year. And then I was just like, man, I guess this is Ohio. 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 So so you went from running both arms, same arm, same leg, 64 to state champion in one season? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I had a teammate who was a state runner up, you know, the previous year. She was a senior. So. Uh, Ooh. she beat me all year. She beat me all year, <laughs> and I was just like, just follow after her, just follow after Heather. And so, um, and then something told you just pass Heather. Heather fi- finally, finally, I got to be. I don't think I beat her to like districts or regionals. I was just like, wow. But she had the high jump, so she was like, yeah. I was like, okay, that's cool. Not you so, stealing her uh, So what I'm hearing here is. Started from the bottom, hot mess. Not even the bottom, the trenches, hot. the gutter. Like, <laughs> state champ, now one yeah. of the best 400 runners in the world. So, if anybody <laughs> caught that message out there, just just work with it. And <laughs> Find what you Just keep going. Grade, like, just you don't have going. to put your kid in track at five. Wait till ninth yeah. grade and ninth tell how to run. <laughs> For <laughs> sure. It, it took me a while. I used to negative like, split. I'm still stuck on two to seven. <laughs> She's even uh, left. Right. 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 The right. trajectory. The trajectory. Yeah. Were so. you, can I, okay. I'm still, yeah. I'm, I'm, so were you going in front of people or behind? Because there's other people. I was in, in front of, I was going like in front. The, I, told, I told you they were very upset. That They're like, what are you doing? Get out the way. I'm like, I'm sorry. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> uh, I was not ready for this tea. Have you ever told anyone this story? Have we? Is this a track or some exclusive? Uh, I don't know. You know, not not often. You know, not often. I Let's, I'll keep that unless, secret to myself. You know. Yeah, but. And I, I feel you on the 800. Life. I have a rule. I don't cross the finish line and not finish. Like, I don't like that. Yeah, the well, whole, we became state champs my sophomore year in the four by eight, so it kind of paid off. But yeah, it kind of paid off. Eight, 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 eight. Yeah, at state, did I have four by eight at state? I feel no. like we had a four by eight at state. But all right, well, my team so, didn't have a relay team regardless to get to state, so it didn't matter. The shade of it all. No, they knew. So, so how are you feeling? You mentioned. You're training, you're trying to figure out when yeah. to train to, like what, yeah. um, you know, you're looking to obviously compete for the rest of the summer. Have you, I didn't yeah. see you go over to Europe at all. Are you planning to go over to Europe? No, um, no. maybe, maybe it just kind of depends, you know, how, how things kind of go. I think and just kind of seeing how numbers and things like that look. I mean, I live in Florida and I mean, with certain things, you know, the numbers are high there. So I'm like, huh. Oh. I know it's a little more strict in Europe, which I appreciate if it is, but so we'll see. I don't really know yet. And like I said, school starts the 30th. So I, for me, if I could just get a week, so if nothing's past the 23rd, I would love that. So I don't know when some of the weeks are. I know some of them are. I would love to highlight that that because I feel like people think that like track is just during track season. Like we get no breaks. Like our off season is not a season. It is 
a week, maybe two. Depending on the year, it might be three. Yeah. But people really don't understand that coach be like, you get one one week to go to an island or something, go see your family. <laughs> Either or, you yeah. can't do both. And then come right back here for fall train for fall training. Well, for sure. I'm sure you're gonna take a little bit more of a break, but you're she just saying you start but she's saying she starts class in a week. So she's saying like a week of having absolutely nothing, right? Yeah. But I, I imagine you're gonna take more than a week off from training. Yeah, probably at least probably like four to six weeks, somewhere like yeah. that. Some, well, something something like that. Like three weeks two weeks off and then you have to like start doing like baby stuff and like well, that's hearing. yeah well it's crazy so <laughs> so how are how are you feeling after trials how are you first of all you had a great season um Thank i you. was down here watching you like oh jess is out here killing it i need to get my butt <laughs> on the track how, how are you feeling after trials with the rest of the, yeah. the season coming up races coming up feeling good about closing out the year on a good note yeah, for sure. I am, um, you know, I wanted to, I wanted, I want to run like 50 point again, at least, you know, I feel like that's one of my main goals. Um, I'm just like, man, it's 51 one just keep, I don't know, it's just keep showing up. I'm just like, uh, uh-uh. uh. so um, hopefully I'll have a couple more races to, to do that and finish out the season. Um, that's a high note for me, you know, uh, yeah. trying to accomplish that and just really finishing healthy. I think that's the 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 main thing because when you're healthy you can train like you want you can compete like you want and um yeah and and so you can just it's just better when you're healthy I, I know y'all know that uh um so yeah I, I think that's the biggest thing just trying to stay healthy trying to stay you know in it it's it's kind of hard like like I said a lot of my training partners are you know either away um at the Olympics or I'm not there in Florida. So kind of, you know, training on your own, you yeah. know, getting up every day and being like, hey, remember you said you wanted this. I'm like, I know, but I also said I wanted cake. So, you know, you got to just keep pushing past the things like, okay, you can't have no cake, you know, not right now, you know, have grapes instead. You're just like, uh, I guess I <laughs> not have grapes. Not cakes, grapes. I, and I, you uh, know what? I think that that's something that's missed about our sport, right? You're bringing up a great yeah. point that like a lot of times, not even just the Olympics. Sometimes it's a track yeah. meet that maybe your coach yeah. went with your your training partners or vice versa. You went to a track meet and your coach stayed back. Um, yeah. And you still have to work yeah. without your coach there. You still have to find that motivation without your training partners there to push you through the workout. So, so yeah. I think that that's a, a great um, point that you bring up that I don't think a lot of people – get that sometimes we really are we call it an individual sport but sometimes we really are out there individually sometimes yeah. we're like hey mom can you time she no 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 one thing about track and i'm like this <laughs> just yell out when the clock says 15 <laughs> and she's like okay i don't know why you have me out here i mom mom will come to practice with a book and i'm like i need you to pay attention <laughs> yeah you're just out there just trying to Sometimes you don't even have someone out there to call mm-hmm. out times, and you're just trying to yeah. hit the time, stay Look on down, pace. Like, that was off. Too fast, too slow. Well, like, For sure. Or if you got one of those watches, you can put the little time, you know, the time is supposed to be here beeping, like, oh, my gosh, I only got five seconds to get here, mm-hmm. and it might take me six. So, yeah, for sure. It's definitely a, a, a process just to, to stay in it and to stay um, – just just motivate it, you know, intrinsically. Like, even when you do have other people, it, it does help, but you have to keep showing up, you know, mentally yeah. and, and physically. So, y'all know how it goes. And if y'all need, if y'all can't motivate yourself and you need a little help to get the, the tummy right, get it tight. But beyond the tummy, Jessica posts, like, I don't want to say beyond, because we are going to talk about that, but you post very motivational and encouraging um, content. So, you need a little pick me up. You need uh, some spiritual guidance. Jessica, Rain Two is the one to follow. Yeah, and get your fix. Thank is you. it Faith Bill Friday? Did I get that? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, that's right. But on Tuesdays, we tell me right. So <laughs> it's you can also go to her her website and do some one on one coaching, one on one session, and just get the core together. <laughs> I haven't seen any abs like it, so. <laughs> Go ahead and book Thank you. Bless it. Yes. It's been, it's a, it's a journey. Well, y'all know how it is. Like, you know, 
Uh, let me let me check. We don't tell them to have you have your um, <laughs> tummy time sessions. Pop yes, up. I'm yeah, actually gonna post. Them. Well, I'm gonna post it on my YouTube because they're like, you're the most YouTube and non YouTube person I know. I'm like, oh my gosh, nobody told me it takes all of this. It's so and, much work. you know, with I'm cutting it down. I'm like, oh, I don't like that. Oh, I, I want this here. Oh, I want this here. I'm like, oh, my gosh. No music, music, you know, that kind of thing. And so, but I do have a, um, I'm going to put part of it on my Instagram today, but I do have a Tummy Tuesday video on, um, that I'm going to put on my YouTube. Because I had several people that's Tell like, I was YouTube doing Tummy Tuesday with you. Um, it's uh, Rain Gold. Rain Gold. But like rain, like I rain as a king, queen, not rain. Yes. Like rain yes. down on me. Um. That's not where okay. I thought you was going with that. We do a. We should probably do a a track girl summer tummy time where we, Collab, we follow. I feel so. I feel like. Yeah, yeah, okay. you guys up. I'm subscribed. Cause I I need to get my yeah. four together. Same. I haven't. I I was I've been injured, and I've just been like, well. Flo was like, you're off for, for for the next foreseeable. And I was just like, okay, I haven't done, I haven't touched a core ab or anything. So I'm going to need to do a crunch or two. Okay, well, you can I just try the beginner. It's 150 I abs. I have okay. beginner. I have beginner in advance. But I have, the beginner's going to be too easy. But I, I give do, me intermediate. Like in the, I had you know, and it. that's what I'm kind of working on. Y'all, <laughs> y'all are funny. The the Tummy Tuesday video is gonna be 150 abs in four minutes. I know y'all, or less than four minutes. I know y'all can do that. That's like light work. Light work. They said give us a preview now. <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, you don't have to give us a preview, but yeah, give us a little breakdown of what the different packages are: beginner, intermediate, okay. advanced. I think okay. I made up the the, No, she got a preview. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So the intermediate, I'm working on that. That's supposed to be at the uh, because I realized that some people weren't advanced, but the beginner was too easy. So the beginner program is pretty much set up where you'll do like three days a week. And then you'll, um, you, it's actually like breaks in between. And I also recommend like different exercises for you to do because, you know, doing abs alone, you have to do some type of cardio. And so I have like a nutrition card in the, um, in the packet, which pretty much are recommendations of things that I try to tell you to avoid during the 30 days. So, you know, I'm saying like no soda, no white sugar, no fried foods. You know, those are all just suggestions because uh, as y'all all know, it's not just exercise. It's also don't like the results. Don't come crying to me. If you don't come. If you're not going to do fried. it. All right. Because <laughs> this is just for well, we 30 can be days. Brown sugar, right? Sure. <laughs> Let's try honey. Just can I have there's honey. There's honey. There's agave. Um, okay. And, How and about then stevia? like the, stevia. Okay. Ooh, I hate yeah, that is I stevia, stevia is good. Is that aftertaste. Stevia is good. Um, and then like I want to say like on the first day, it's it's the beginner is really light. It's say it's like 10, 10, and ten, ten of something. I mean, it's really just trying to get you going. But then it'll increase either in like reps, uh, in sets. You know, it'll go up to 15 and, and that kind of thing. And it really is just over a course of 30 days. It's really just to get people to um, form a habit or a routine uh, just for discipline. So like I said, so some days it might tell you abs and it'll tell you um, a cardio. And I'll literally, it'll literally say, you know, elliptical, um, you know, jog, jump rope. And then it'll be from like, you know, I think I recommend 30 to 45 minutes of some type of cardio. And then I also have days in there where I'm incorporating, like, you need to rest. Because I think sometimes people are like, you must work out every day. Yeah. You know, I, you only eat carrots. I'm like, what is going on here? I eat full cool meals. And so, you know, just trying to get people into the routine. Some of the people I do the Zoom sessions with. So we meet for 40 minutes on Zoom and we do kind of like a warm up. Uh, and then we do abs and the warm up is pretty much just to get your blood flowing. It's almost like hit in a, in a sense, if you're thinking about something, so high intensity intervals, um, and what else? I, yeah, I think that in on there, you know, I had a woman, she's like, I love juice. You know, I have a class. She's like, I, I can't stop juice. And I was like, I don't want you to go cold Turkey, but if you're drinking juice every day, 
like for the next two weeks, let's try to do it for three or four days. So now they people have to pick and choose. Oh my gosh, this day I'm not gonna have juice. And I remember she was like, Oh my gosh, I'm down to juice to one day a week. I was like, Okay, look at you. And incorporating more water. Yeah. Or I told her, You want lemonade? Make it yourself. I think a lot of people, you know, once you tell them, Oh, make it yourself, they're kinda of like, That's a lot of work. I don't really want to do that. But that's actually healthier because now you can see how much you how you're much putting you're putting in it. Yeah, how many <laughs> lemons you have to use, your water. So so that's pretty much what the what the programs are. I think I also want to create something, you know, that's kind of in the works right now where people can kind of do it with me. So you click on it and we're literally doing, it'll say what the workout is, but then we'll do it together. Like I'm literally going right. through I'll the workout with you because I think some people need that type of um, accountability. Mm -hmm. So I think that's also, you know, another thing. But at the same time, no one's going to be more accountable than yourself. And I always tell them that like, I'm proud of you but not more proud than you should be of yourself because you're doing the work. Um, and so. And if, yeah. and if your Instagram is rain too. Or two. Two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go follow Jessica. On. If you, if you're like, Oh you, no, like go look at her abs and I guarantee you don't want to get on her program because exactly. Lord dang. Also, if you refresh your feed, we have her uh, tummy Tuesday <laughs> offer down at the bottom so just refresh your feed and you can click on that and um you'll get all of the packages all of the information is right there she made it very easy for you to sign up for beginner and immediate advanced uh nothing better than being um motivated and supported by the professional herself yeah um as she said she gives suggestions and if you don't yeah. follow the suggestions that's on you <laughs> but the the results Speak for themselves as yeah. you can see if you go to yeah. Rain Two, you. go to Tummy Tuesday. Yeah, that's that. Oh. She just because I feel like I'm the most undisciplined, disciplined person. Like I'll do something if someone tells me to do it, no problem. But like routines <laughs> are very hard for me to get into. Like mm -hmm. doing well, once I have the routine, it's it's fine. But I just said this earlier, mm -hmm. like. 30 days it's about once you do habit. something for a certain amount of time then it becomes a habit yeah. it's it's the yeah. the challenge to start the habit yeah, yeah. for sure especially uh, i've had some people's like you know i'm ready to lose weight and after the first day that's like i'm not coming back i'd rather just you know stay high i am so kind of just realizing like pain is a little bit of the process i mean we hear that but when you actually feel it you know just like the first week back you're like oh my gosh the weight room i can barely walk or you know this workout i could barely breathe and it's just like, man, all of that's just, well, you should be breathing, though, through Tummy Tuesday. If you're not breathing, then we don't breathe. <laughs> but just, you know, just with certain things, it's just how important it is to yeah. to really just to stick with it, even if a part of the process is difficult. That's what I should use differently. Yeah. Because it always gets worse before it gets better. I tell everyone, like, when I, when, yeah. you start, you know, when I tell people, like, hey, going natural, whether it's doing a workout, they always like you're gonna struggle, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, this is a little easier, this is a little easier. Someone said it takes 21 to 60 Jessica days. Said it takes 21 yeah. days. Anywhere in between <laughs> that that range, yes. So anywhere from three weeks to a couple months. Uh, did we miss today's Zoom? No, it's at seven. Well, I have different slots because some people's like seven doesn't really work for me, but uh, it's at seven today, seven p.m. Eastern time. But I also have like eight p.m. because I just realized that some people. You know, they work late, which I, you know, for me, that was just foreign. You know, I'm going to practice at nine in the morning. I'm like, the day's done. You're not you know, done by five. three. <laughs> I'm done by one. I know. I'm like, this is nuts. <laughs> so, and if you're on the West Coast trying to link in like eight to yes, and five. All, all these things, I'm just like, man. So then like Tuesdays used to be the best option for me because I'm normally off on Wednesday. So I can go to nine o'clock because in the summer in Florida, we're having 7 a.m., 730 practices because it's mm -hmm. so hot. Right. So I'm in in sense. bed nine o'clock. So yeah. so yeah. Okay. I I have a question. I have a question. Yes. For for you too, as a unit, what what's it like being on that four by four team? What is it like? Depends. <laughs> Depends on the uh, what part of it are you talking about? Yeah. And then I'm I want it all. I'm all okay. I'm, you know, I'm just gonna sit here, get my <laughs> and just sit, just. Well, I will say I don't think the four by four has as much drama as the four by one does. For sure, really, I don't think so. No, no I think before Jessica no, came on scene, <laughs> I would just like to yeah. say twenty 
2015. And then I'm, that's all I'm going to say. 2015. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. But see, I think it just drama, depends. Yeah. yeah. The drama is actually more so the outside folk talking. Mm. But inside. Y'all cool? Y'all be cool, my I wouldn't say that. All right. But I wouldn't yeah. say that, like, <laughs> we're talking mess to each other. Yeah. On the, it's kind of like drama exists, but we got a job to do. So the drama, like I always say, because if you let the drama come between my check, then and I always say that like I don't. Well, what do you think, Jess? I think it's changed over the years. I feel like from my first year in '09, you know, when I was 20, and it's like you're the youngest on the team to. You know, 2019, I feel like it's drastically different. Both of those experiences, even some of the other ones. I think with any sport, there's politics. And of course, I think there are some. I feel like now what, I, what I've what i witnessed in like 2019 is to some degree politics being set aside and it really being decisions made based on um, performance and who's kind of you know, shown their fitness rather than other factors that have been, I feel like, kind of at the forefront, you know, as far as preference and, you know, um, whatever other, um, yeah, whatever other things that people might consider, oh, this is more important. You know, it used to be like in 09, it was like, you ran well on your first leg, but you're not going to win the final because you don't have as much experience, you know? And of course I'm like, I'm 20. I'm like, this is so true. This is my first team. I don't have any experience. Like you're, you're completely right. And then as I got older, I'm just like, man, if you never run in a final, how do you, how do you get experience? And mm-hmm. so then it, it became, you know, is it just about experience or is it about, you know, how somebody looking at training over there, or is it about, well, this person placed this high at trial. So they have to be on it. Even if, you know, they don't look as fit as somebody else. And so I've seen all these other factors, relay coaches, some coaches, you know, preferring a certain athlete on the relay. I've seen it like 2019, I think was the, especially one of the first years where I saw people say, you know, a lot of people's like, it's going to be like this because this is how it's always been. And then something totally different was, I feel like all the people who ran the final were the people who were supposed to run the final based on performance, based on, you know, um, what they achieved there and in that time. And I don't know. I think that's a great thing because that means to me that the sport is progressing in, in a positive manner. You know, I feel like yeah. I used to have to kind of give that speech. You know, I, I told Phyllis once, I was like, I know you're doing well, but if they, they're probably not going to pick you. You know, I'm like, don't get your hopes up. And I yeah. was like, man, I hate to give this speech to a young person coming in. And now I don't feel like that's necessarily the case, you know, as I felt like it was always the case for, for the most part, like 90% of the time. So I'm happy to see the sport progress in, in that way where it's like, man, you know, like we saw two 400 hurdlers on the four by four. And I feel like I used to see like LaShinda on it, you know, and and I mean, I mean, she won worlds that year, but other than that, you know, I, I don't feel like I've really seen that, but it made sense. And so to me, um, I feel like the integrity of the sport as far as the four by fours have gotten better and more fair than previous years where I felt like it's completely unfair uh, in some instances. So I, I like that you, um, cause I wasn't there in 2019, but I yeah. was a part of some drama in 2017 yeah. and I chose to speak up and in speaking up, I realized that a large part of the issue was, as you said, the politics and just kind of normalizing what it was that like yeah. we had gotten used to that. Like the coaches are going to pick their favorite. Yeah. The coaches are going, they're, they're going to do the whole experience thing, Yeah, you know? And I just kind of got to the, the point where it was like, okay, if they pick me, they pick me. I'd done several years of like just running the prelims and then yeah. made my way into like, running the final, not running the prelim, yeah. but only running the final. Yeah. Um, but then also seeing how there was total miscommunication and, and a mm-hmm. communication in a way that I was like, I'm not used to this. I'm at least told you're running or you're not running or you're in a runoff yeah. or you're not in a runoff. Yeah. And in my situation in 17, I was in a runoff that I didn't know that I was in a runoff. Yeah. 
And so I spoke up for that. But then in speaking yeah. up for it, I realized that other athletes were in the same position before where it was like, yeah. they wouldn't even know till the morning of that they were running the yeah. final. And it's like, how do you prepare for the final at the Olympics? And you don't even know you're running till the morning. Of, like that's not, yeah. but that was the culture of yeah. the relays. And we had all kind of just a, grew to accept yeah. that, you know? For sure. um, so it makes me happy to hear that after that, um, yeah. hopefully some of the yeah. kerfuffle that I kicked up yeah. <laughs> made a change in that, like throw yeah. politics out. Like it's really about putting the best four legs out there. Yeah. You got to show fitness. You got to yeah. show camaraderie, professionalism, yeah. all those things to show up on the track. So that, that makes me happy to hear. And hopefully we see yeah. some more of that professionalism. Yes. Um, Cause now we have two relays. Yes. Yeah, and that. Yeah, it's even that I is, is I love it. I mean, 2019 was the first time I've I ever ran in for it to be at Worlds. I was just like, man, this is what I've been missing out on, you know, at, at uh, World Relays. But I, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it's kind of nerve wracking. Like, you know, when someone's coming in and you're like, you're trying to and wave them in. Like, what am I supposed to do? And I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, do I get out hard? Like, I mean, we were practicing it, and I was just like, "Man, he done almost went past me!" Like, this is something. But it was, it was just a great, a great feeling. I feel like, you know, I can only imagine my maybe how it would have been if it kind of switched up, and I was my leg was against a guy. I don't know. It, I don't know how I would have yeah, felt about like, that. I, probably good like, and bad. If Fred Curley is running me down, <laughs> like, I don't know how I don't <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that? I let me tell you, I, will, I when I heard about the mixed relay, I was like. I don't know if I'm interested in that, especially okay. if like you can put your legs however you want to. There's no like, yeah, you know, um, but also I do like the opportunity that it creates for everyone in the sense of yeah. like, no shade, no tea, Team USA. We just yeah. got so much talent <laughs> that thank yeah. God we have another relay legs now on legs on legs. <laughs> to put some some people that yeah. like. You're performing awesome, but sorry, we're TV USA. Yeah. You're just not that good on TV yeah, USA. We have so many. <laughs> but then it does provide yes. other opportunities also for other countries as well. Like to get Team USA. USA. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. you know, actually, we didn't win the first one in um at World Relay. We didn't get it right. The Bahamas but won. at this point, I just like I expect us <laughs> when it comes to real, I'm like, I expect us to win. I expect Especially, excellence. That, I mean, y'all y'all have y'all have spoiled me. Um I have a question. Correct. And that's the truth. That's the truth. I know Natasha remembers in like 2013, we really won. But at the time, we got second because um, Russia cheated. And so, like, that was the question everywhere was like, are you guys happy with a silver medal? Or like, no. would you have preferred the gold? I'm like, everybody I prefers know how the gold. We got because we were uh, screw faced on the podium. Oh, <laughs> uh, they were like, y'all should have looked, you know, and so it's like a double edged sword. Like y'all should have been grateful. Y'all got a medal, grateful but then it was like, grateful to lose. Medal. It's just like, it's, it, it just was a, it was just a very interesting place to be. And I mean, literally, and then, you know, the questions were just about, you know, you didn't have, you know, we didn't have Sonya. Allison had got hurt that year uh, in the, in the 200. So they were like, do y'all think y'all would have won without them? Or what? I'm just like, what are all these questions? And, you know, the reality was I had to tell them, like, we're not always going to have them. We're not always going to have Natasha. I'm not always going to be running. Like, right. at some point, we have to learn how to win just as Team USA. It's it's less about, you know, winning as uh, individuals when it comes to the relay. And it's more about winning, you know, um, as, a, as a team. So, I man, always, I just... kills us. And that's a whole nother topic, but we, it's hard for us to be a team, man. It is it's oh, hard for us to be collective. Sure. <laughs> what? Sure. You know, I think, yeah. yeah. What leg do you guys prefer on the relay? I like second. Second or third. I like the, the inside legs. Yeah. You know, as a professional, I've never ran last that I really can remember outside of like pin relays. And that was the leg I always ran in college for the mm -hmm. most part. So I feel like I had to learn a new leg being, you know, I was like, Oh, I like second. And they were like, ah, ah, those are other people's legs. I'm like, <laughs> okay, put me, um, don't put me first, put me third. And it was like, I, maybe we could fit you in. But now I realized like, I actually like first. 
I like the only thing I don't like is now I gotta watch all the other three legs and I don't care if I feel like we got the best three people. My chest is just like I'm well, just like, I come on, like, each leg. You just And like I'm dead and tired of I'm still trying to cheer and I'm But I almost like <laughs> so now I don't like first leg, but I like the idea of being done. <laughs> because then now yeah. I'm standing there watching and Lord, like, let me get the stick in first, which we always do. Now I'm like oh, God, please don't catch me. Please don't let nobody yeah. walk me down. <laughs> please don't let me throw away what these girls just did. Yeah. I was the same way in college. Like, I'm a control freak. I wanted to be anchor leg because if we gonna lose, someone needs to come get me or I need to not get somebody. But then as a pro, I mean, I was never on, like, Team USA. But I w- with our team, I was when I was running with Bobby's group, my job was just to give the baton to Allison in first because I would go first, you go second. And, it, and she made my life easy. I said, here you go. Do what you need to do. Yeah. We haven't had that many different anchor legs as far as, I want to say, like Team USA that I can remember. I think in 2011, uh, the coach at the time had told Francina, like, you're going to be the first anchor, like, outside of, like, Sonya's been doing this since, like, 2000 or 2004. And we're in 2011. Yeah, because Allison's usually second. Someone asked, is there a worse leg? I feel like le- the last leg would be um, so pressurized. So, I think it just kind of depends on, one, what place you're in, and two, like, the type of mentality that you have. You have some people like uh, Rod Benjamin at Worlds when he, when he was going to be on anchor. He, I remember him saying, like, man, I kind of wish we was behind a little bit so I can go get him. I'm like, huh? I, that's I'm the best. That's be the best here. part. That's when the, I, like. I, I like. love. <laughs> I love blood in the water. Like I'm coming for you. Yeah. I'm so yeah, I don't like yeah. running. From and so it just kind of depends. But then he was like, if I'm in the front, like it's also like, okay, I know they coming, and I'm gonna be coming too. Like you are gonna have to come hard. So you know, I think it just kind of depends on. Um, it's, it's a part of being the, the athlete. Right? We all have our preferences of like how we. But at the end of the yeah. day, the job has to get done. <laughs> from yeah. behind or the front so at the end of the day this for is sure be in the front when we cross the finish line like <laughs> however you gotta get for it sure. get it get it exactly <laughs> all right well Jess thank you for joining us I do want to ask um yeah. you know what's next next year is the world championship year then yeah. we also have you know a very short Olympic cycle are we yeah. gonna go for another team? What what's what's the plans? I'm not really sure. No pressure, you know. Tell us your life. I'm not really You're sure. I would. So initially, like before COVID hit, my plan was like, you know what? Like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be done after Worlds because it's in like, you know, it's in the oh. U.S. Like that was that was originally my my thing. I was like, you know, make the team, and then when I just missed the team by that spot, I'm just like. You know, my sister, she's like, come on, sissy. Like, I think it's only three years. It's, I'm just like, woo, another three years of training. Another. <laughs> I don't think that one that. Is... When people ask me that, I'm like, I'm looking forward to not training like this anymore. Yeah. Like, of course, I'll continue to train yeah. and stay fit. Yeah. But the, the yeah. way that we pain. train. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's something. So a part of me is like one thing I for sure wanted to do is finish my degree. Um, I want to be a high school AD, and so a part of my degree plan for this semester is actually like a practicum internship somewhere that I have to figure out somewhere in Houston or Austin or somewhere that's not too far uh, of a drive if I have to. Um, and then a part of me is like, dang, what what if I get like, you know, what happened if I get a job as a, you know, as something that I want to do after sport? Like, do I turn that down? Because I'm like, so, you know, I feel like that's always been my life. Oh, I really want to, but I got to train. Oh, I really want to, but I'm going to Worlds. Oh, I really want to, but I have USAs. Like, that's always been it. And so I think it just kind of depends. I for sure want to do 2022, uh, especially it being in Oregon. But I I just don't know. I think if, if Somebody convinces me to go to 2023, I probably will try 2024, but they would have to convince me to go to 2023, yeah. and I just don't know about that. So that's my that's that's my goals. You know, like I said, eventually, uh, I love inspiring people. I love helping and reaching out, but I also just want to to use my platform 
uh, about ways. to for other things I'm passionate about. Yeah, I love kids and I want to help them, you know, get into whether it's trade school, into college. You know, I want to um, help coach, you know, other athletes, especially young girls who, you know, who are like, wow, oh, you're from where I'm from, you know, um, and you've gone to these places. So me too. And so I'm like, man, I want to be hands on. And so that's, that's my main, that's my main focus. And so I'll just kind of see how the, how the cards lay. Like I said, 2022 for sure. But if, if I decide to retire after 2022, I'm okay with that. And if I decide to keep pushing for 2024, y'all pray for me, y'all eat for me, Y'all eat all the things that I ain't going to be able to have. And, you know, uh, I, somebody got to let me play with their kids. Like, hey, you know, uh, do something. So it sounds like because there is life after track. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think yeah. you bring up a really For great sure. point because I feel like track, I always have to feel like track. Your life on hold. Yeah. It's like, I tell people it's not a job. It's a lifestyle. Like, it's 20, what I eat, how I sleep, like, all that. And there's so many, t- like, we are more than athletes. Like, we have other interests, other skills, other talents. But a lot of times we don't get to explore those because track is yeah. so consuming that we have to put so many things on the back burner. I remember this one guy, he was like, I'm n- I never see you out for a, how come you don't, I was like, I practice. Right. He was like, but I, no, I practice. And I was, I was like, the only day I don't have practice is Sunday. And I use that day to prepare myself to get ready for practice. <laughs> oh yeah. um, and so it's, I'm glad that you have like a plan to yeah. explore your, cause you clearly have so many gifts and you, have such a giving heart. I think everything she said, she was just like, I want to help this person. I want to help kids. I want to do So by the way, I'm going to be hitting you up to come and talk to my NHF girls. So Yeah, thanks, for sure. Girl. For sure. Because, you know, I'll be back in college station, just a little hop, skip in the a, in a drive. You know, y'all look fabulous, by the way. Y'all didn't tell me that I was supposed to be looking fabulous. Y'all, you know. It's true. I, I, I took a, I took a look at the, yeah. And you showing them how chat girls do. Because I feel like people only see us like this. They don't see us like, you know, how y'all look at, but we, we, try to we got to work or two. Yeah. That's yeah. okay. We'll have you back for the 400 and, you know. Okay. You can... And you, first of all, someone said this in the beginning. They said, uh, Jessica Beard has the best smile in the game. So all you got to do is wear it. That and your exactly. dress. So, <laughs> you look bomb. Yeah. I'm looking at the comments. Uh, one, mm-hmm. someone said that they're learning so much about track and field through this show. And I that's the whole reason we're doing it because I feel like, not a lot of people understand exactly what we do. We are bringing the culture to track and field. And then someone says, with crazy busy schedules, do you guys like meal prepping? Um, or do you have another method to help with meals during a tough training week? I'll let Jessica go yeah. and tell what you do. Um, I, I don't like meal prepping uh, just because I don't like heating my food up. I normally try to cook for like the next day. So I normally like if I cook, it's also something I can eat the next day. I'm a snacker. People will, if people are hungry, they're like, what snacks do you have? I'm the person that's bringing my little um, strappable cooler on my shoulder to practice because I, I so me, I don't, prep, do. I guess for the long Everyone. run, but I, yes, I'm prepping like, okay, you're going from here to the weight room in 45 minutes. You know, where is your protein? I Where I have like yogurt, breakfast. fruit for sure. So I, I do prep in that sense. Okay, no, I, for sure i have you know i'll do nuts it depends on the workout some things i'm just like who got the water in the shade because that's i can't even take anything but i am that person i don't necessarily meal prep over um a, a lot of days but i will cook maybe for like the next day um and because i enjoy cooking so being in the kitchen is something i'm just like oh i love being in here it's like so let's so, so yeah uh that's me all your food <laughs> Alex, no, no, Natasha's got the cheat code. Okay, let me tell you. Let me tell you guys something. I was over here getting, tell we're us. getting ready for the show, trying to do stuff, <laughs> and I was, I was, I was exhausted, tired, hungry, and her mom was like, "Oh, I cooked a little something, <laughs> gourmet meal, Gour- gourmet meal." I, I, I hugged your mom several <laughs> times this night over this meal. I, I held that little deer in my arm. Back for seconds. I wanted to go back for Thursday, but I didn't want to be rude. Um, I Natasha is blessed beyond measure. Okay, her cup run is over, and, and I'm over here. Oh, I'm over here trying to cook myself a grilled chicken, and she's she's got her mom throwing down. 
Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, you haven't had the payout yet, but yeah. I, here's the thing. I, I I asked this woman to adopt me. So no no shade to my mom. I love you. No shade to Lena. Cause when my she's just out of town. Cause my mom does cook when she's in town. <laughs> <laughs> she out of town. Um, she's trying she's trying to find that nineteen dollar frontier flight flight to get out here. Um, but. <laughs> <laughs> do you know if you buy Frontier or Spirit at the airport, it's cheaper? Did you know that? Like, okay, so the, uh, we we were gonna buy tickets that cost like a hundred and thirty dollars. See, we went to the airport; they were forty two ninety nine. See, same ticket, same round trip ticket. Frontier and Spirit. I don't, I don't know about Spirit all the time. You might not get where you're going, but with Frontier, That's I, I'm like, I need my mom to land. Find, land find their hub. Find their hub. Find their hub. If you find their hubs, hub cities, the plane might get there. If you going where you just got an overnight bag, best of luck to you. But <laughs> if you, I'm trying to tell you, I didn't know that you could, you'll save at least $30 by buying those tickets at the airport. Nobody else that nobody else works like that, but you know, no free, you I, I'm not, See, I'm not trying to shout them out. I'm just trying to get people to save because I'm big on saving money. Yes. So if you're going to plan on using those airlines, buy them at the airport so you can save money. <laughs> Do you, so you guys don't eat during workouts? I, I'm the type of person like, you know how some people would like, like to run on empty stomach? I like to be a li- like, if I'm a little hungry, I'll pass out on you. So I will be. In Do the you eat breakfast of- in the morning? I eat breakfast, lunch. I'm a I'm a mealer, but I also like I like to have what? like, huh? I I eat all the time. Well, I was about to say, what you eat for breakfast? Oatmeal. Um, it depends. Like I'll I usually eat oatmeal, but that makes... oatmeal. Oatmeal, oatmeal, like oatmeal. It's not enough. Be, no. It's not enough. It has to be oatmeal and a smoothie, or I like to do like an omelet or Eggs? a breakfast okay. burrito. You doing an omelet before practice? This is the thing. Oh, and that's not. Oh wow. Unless it's weights, weights, I'll just have like a smoothie and then I'll like eat. I'll have breakfast. I'll have breakfast after weights and then I'll go to practice. But I eat and then I'll eat during practice. Like ask all the kids yeah. know if you need some. If you're like, oh, I'm hungry, like go ask Corey. She probably has something in her bag. Um, all right, we'll take this one last question. How much do your agents and peeps take care of, or are you on your own figuring out your meal stuff? Agents do track meets and contracts. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what you eating is For on sure. you. <laughs> yeah. I can't train empty stomach. Someone has to be trained. Yeah. No, no, I, I at least have to have. I have to eat if, 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 yeah. if anything at all, I have to have a smoothie. But better to have breakfast. Okay. Um. So, Jess, thank y'all for thank having you for me. Joining us. Um. Everybody, Thanks. look out for Jess. Um. If you refreshed your um browser, Tummy Tuesday is down below. Also, make sure that you follow Jess. On Instagram, Instagram, Twitter, Rain to Facebook too, and you should uh, Rain, yeah, on Twitter, Run to Rain, Rain Gold. And I try to put Rain, you know, just to keep it consistent, somewhere in there. So yeah, just look for Rain, rain and we'll find her. <laughs> All right, thank well, y'all thank for, for having me. Us. Thank you I for doing this for the again. chat community. Yes, yes. Aww, Bring the culture. Yes, that's yes. one of my people yeah. we need to bring her back with phyllis because them together oh yeah philly phil <laughs> yes <laughs> well we'll for sure have to do it if i'm in austin me and phyllis can do like at the same place and we can oh do- yeah Ooh! we can do that yeah yeah are you vaccinated okay sure because you know mom wouldn't give me a hug without um okay. when i only All had right. one shot oh. yeah for sure <laughs> Sure. All right. <laughs> my mom's down there like oh wow okay <laughs> thanks <Jess. laughs> thank you All bye right. bye so we only have 17 percent left on the camera is that, hold on camera um so we're this going that you to, force us to use no, listen the quality's gonna, great. we're gonna figure it out we're gonna figure Someone it said out they really enjoy, yes jessica's yes. great like she she's one of those people who's just like energy like always positive vibes mm-hmm. she she really took me under like my first team oh she could tell you some stories uh, we all need one of those on the team yeah i, we, I had a few of those because it was i was i was young didn't know what was going on <laughs> didn't even i didn't even was i wasn't even trying to make the team just ha- just ended up on there 
Oh and Jessica Lord. was just like, come on. That is a Corey story. Um, seems like she's just a positive. Someone can really look up. To, no, like, everything about her is just positive energy, inspiration. Mm-hmm. Like, you could just see it when she talked about all the things she wanted to do. Was Everything was about helping people. Uplifting others. Yep. Huh. <sighs> Great spirit. All right. Well, we've got 16%. Um, tomorrow, Bob's p- plugging our guests for tomorrow. We've got Megan Clark, Cole Walter, and Justin Robinson in the 400 who will be joining us to chat tomorrow. Um, we've got one last topic that we're going to wrap it up with before the camera dies, but it's perfect timing. We're we going to make it to like a little less than two it's hours. It's crazy that I've watched. These That's the whole reason why we're doing this show is because I've been saying like track and has so many amazing personalities. And the one of the reasons why I'm a fan is, like, I love the performances, but I also just love the people, and that's why I root for these people. Because we want, I feel like, and I'm just, I'm, we always get on topic, but I just really want people to really get an inside view of what we do and also the people who these people are so that they can, like, be invested in our sport. Because I feel like that's something that's missing in our sport is, like, we're trying to bring y'all culture. The connection, the culture. Yes. Someone said. Uh, Cecilia, we started at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard, and we will be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard. But you can rewatch you from the beginning. You can rewatch. We will be, this stream will live on all of our YouTubes, Track Girl Summer YouTube, Natasha Hastings, Corey Carter. Um, it's on Twitter. I just retweeted it, so if you need to go back and, and watch the live, you can go back there and see the... Um, you Play do back. need to do better, Cecilia, but oh we're not going to hold it on you because this is the first day. We're learning as a as a group, as, as a unit. As a unit. But Cecilia, but I feel like we did, we're doing fairly well. We had a little bit of technical difficulty, yeah. but we managed that. We pivoted to another yeah. topic, and when Jeff I came a, back, we went right back to. Uh, yeah, you know, we're we're doing it. And I am a mess, but I'm a hot mess. Okay, <laughs> don't forget the hot <laughs> emphasis on hot. All right, let's let's hit the last topic. Okay, so which... we, we've been talking about Tokyo, getting back into that. I still just feel like I need I need to see an itemized list of the budget. I want to know what y'all spending this money on, where this fifteen point four billion goes. Well, some of it's on COVID testing. Cause... Okay, so then we go back to the eleven billion. Like, yeah. I just need to know why the athletes are on cardboard. And and well, no no why some of the athletes are on cardboard it's, because if, if because I it's sustainable because how come throwers get the beds and I, I don't know. I don't know two point four billion in TV and revenue now and, we can have the discussion about like where all of this money is going because it's not to the athletes only the IOC sees it and that's a whole other conversation it's all it's not going to the athletes because we don't get yeah, well, okay it's not going to we talked athletes. about this before but I I need to just hammer this down one more time. What we only other fifteen percent on the batteries? But go ahead. It would be quicker if you just let me. Okay. The point of the matter is, is what other job do you go to, and you're the talent? They're making money off of your image, and you don't see a dime of that. You only get money if you win. You only get money if you win a medal, and the money comes from your NGB. And if if you're lucky enough to have a sponsorship, your sponsorship will pay you a bonus. But so we don't see any of that thirteen billion that uh, it costs to put on the Olympics. And, but, and the Olympics are us, like, and and I'm talking about all the athletes. I'm not just talking about track. I'm talking about like y'all should be paying these athletes. I, I don't a, disagree, like but a I think appearance, it's, it's not an appearance also fee, like back to the culture of things because as I, w- I was doing some research before, once upon a time you could only compete in the Olympics if you were an amateur. So the culture of the games is amateurism. But the sport, so the games I'm have changed into a professional you, money making machine, billions of dollar industry. Saying, we have to know the history and why things work the way they work. Before we can go in and change. No, that. I under I understand the history. I understand the amateurism. What I'm saying is that track and the Olympics has turned into a beast of a money making machine. Agreed. And part of it is because of the and a, the whole point of it is to see these athletes to put on amazing performances. If the if, and the athletes are the talent, you're making all this money. Give the athletes 
whether it's a thousand dollars just to show up. Well, it's not only just not the athletes, but also every city once the Olympics leaves is like left in financial ruin, which is a huge issue that Japan is having and why they even had the Olympics, I believe, because a lot of people in Tokyo didn't even want the games to come because Japan is, have, they're in a state of emergency. COVID is rising and yeah, continuing and they, to, and to they rise. Make it, yeah. And, and the games still happen. And I think largely because Tokyo has spent all this money and they're trying now, and there's no spectators. No yeah, they can't get sales. that money. No ticket sales, no food sales, no merchandise sales. Like, I, I believe there's still some merchandise. But I'm going to say, like, I'm at you're the still, games you're not gonna buying make a t shirt. You're not going to make back taxpayer dollars. Like, that's the other thing. The taxpayers of that city pays for, of the host country, pays for the Olympics to happen. Um, well, I, I'm not talking to Tokyo. I'm talking to the IOC. And I'm saying, how do you have, how are you putting on a show? That's like, I, I go to Broadway and I don't pay the actors, the dancers. And then I'm like, well, if we get it, if we get a Tony, we'll cut you off a little change. But if not, thanks for your performance. I'm not going to blame. I'm just saying it I know. in the history of the the whole idea of the Olympic Games. Like but the Olympic Games are not at once once upon a time you couldn't compete in the Olympics if you were a professional. I get that. I'm I'm saying like it is everything else in the Olympics has progressed. Mm-hmm. So you you know you know one of my missions in life is just to get other people money and secure everyone I love bags. Agreed. Um, Cecilia, why are y'all considered amateurs when you're living, working like professionals? I'm not saying I'm that not, we yeah. now. Yeah. In a lot of instances, we still behave like amateurs. It's another conversation, but behavior and reality are two different things. Um, I'm just saying that the history of the Olympics and athletes competing in the Olympics, and this is all sports, not just track and field, is amateurism. Mm -hmm. And um, I read somewhere that there was like a baseball player or maybe a football player that competed, won medals, and was actually disqualified after the fact because he came home and like joined a professional base. I think it was baseball. Baseball team. Like competing in the Olympics was the spirit of amateurism. Mm Mm-hmm. And but as Corey's pointing out, the sport, not the sport, the games, the games, the nature of the games has changed. And so we need to catch up with the time because it's clearly not amateurs competing in the Olympics and we should be paid for our, um, our this is our job. This is how we, thank you. this is what we do. What? You wouldn't go to any other meet where they're like, well, actually we do, but. <laughs> That's a different story. I guess what I'm figuring out is what is amateurism anyways? Y'all need to make bread. So, like, for example, you have to be an amateur to compete in college sports. or um, Yeah, meaning you you don't get paid. You yeah. can't get paid for it. That's what amateurism means. You can, get, you can get, like, a stipend as far as, like, if you come to – if you – like, when I was – when we were in college, high school, and we were making teams, they could pay for our flight, our, our lodging, and our meals – but I couldn't win prize money at um, juniors. Right, which is why what we're seeing at the NCAA level is happening. It's so huge because, yeah. yeah. Um, Cecilia, yes, you're supposed to be high level on the side. And believe it or not, even in this modern day and age, there are a lot of athletes at the Olympics right now that do work full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. And they're still there. This is like their side hustle, their side... Um, especially like in track and field like i think it's like the <laughs> average and we focus a lot on track and field but i, I guarantee you there's yeah. 50 sports that i don't even know about half of them like that yeah they're probably working full-time jobs on top of yeah. competing in the olympics training for the olympics and well, you know but i feel like it's the, the average salary for a track athlete it's is like fifteen thousand a year i thought it was thirty thousand dollars Oh, for a track athlete. Track I'm sorry. Athlete. I was. I, I did the Olympic. Yeah. Sorry. It's like thirty thousand. Um, and so if that's the average, that means a lot of people are making less than that. And like, if you aren't lucky enough, like some athletes have contracts with these these um companies, these shoe companies, and all they're getting is gear. Like yeah. they're not getting actually paid for it. There's a, in fact, 
this is the point where like you have to try to build a whole like program where you could work for dicks um dick sporting goods. dick sporting goods so that you can like continue your olympic dream and they understood that you were an athlete so they would work with your and no shade yeah. because no, no shade. No. here's what i realized like we're privileged we are. in being sponsored athletes yeah to the point where I didn't even know how expensive a pair of training shoes are or tights are. And so even to yeah. the point that like some athletes only get that stuff, it's expensive to, to train. And like, we're just talking about equipment, but then you still have to pay your coach, your uh, recovery, your diet. All of these things are still, still go into you being this professional athlete. I was, I wasn't shading them for like only getting gear. I'm, but I also think it's like, when I say they only get gear, it's like, we're getting paid to wear their gear. Mm-hmm. And now they're using gear as payment. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, if other people are getting but paid. But I'm just, I'm not I, saying yeah. that it's shady, but I'm also saying it's the necessary it's part of yeah. doing what we do. And so if that and expense is taken care of for you. Yeah. I get what you I'm just, I feel like there's, there's. I feel like they know that there's value in having their logo on your body when you're competing. And, I and think, gear is nothing. Well, gear is expensive to someone who, who like doesn't have a contract. It's nothing to them. But I also think too much of the argument is placed on the shoe company. Oh, no. As opposed to the leagues being the one paying the athletes. Because the NFL play, pays their players. Yeah. The football players, their contracts don't look like our contracts from shoe companies. <laughs> unless yeah. unless you're Metcalf yeah. or, you know, Tom Brady, they're only getting ten thousand dollars in yeah. year. They're not getting so that that's another conversation that we put a lot of pressure on these uh shoe companies to carry the sport. Yeah. When really the money should be coming from an IOC or not even an IOC because an your league. your entity should be paying I mean yeah, the global situation. It should be a team thing. That's but we're yeah. getting way off topic here. Someone asked a question: Is do you guys continue? Yeah, my definitely... battery's dying. We definitely. Well, we are coming. We have fifty. Okay. Well, we're we do there. compete. I mean, we don't get paid. Like especially like if we're if we Texas want to relays. Team yeah. Like meets Mount Tech. Well, Mount Tech is starting to be a little pay. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of times the good thing is like we I I feel like we come down. On, um, we on our time. covering bodies, but like USA Times Bill does have like a program that like if we there's a so meet funny. that like you want to go to and they'll provide funding for travel so you can get there and not have to come out of your pocket to pay for a hotel and a flight. Um, but yeah, there's certain meets that's like if this I don't go to the country or this meet works with my training schedule, and so we'll go to meets that are smaller and they don't pay you, but they yeah. we kind of use those as like training tools. Yeah exhibition races yeah well guys we're gonna end at like 15 minutes early because i don't want the camera to cut off and we don't do our farewells and say bye-bye um but thank you for joining us hopefully you enjoyed us hopefully you'll be back tomorrow same time same and place we i literally learned who our guests were <laughs> In, but let's bring some folks back share yeah. the link you know we we do this on the youtube share the link like the link uh if you missed it if you uh signed on late you can go back to youtube we'll we'll retweet it for you to watch the playback but we'll be back tomorrow we'll be back with more guests we'll be back with megan clark, clark and justin robinson um and we're bringing you the culture um, I, ha- I had a good time natasha I did too i'm glad you're my co-host i'm glad you're my co-host oh it's a track girl summer and cut <laughs> Except we're still on the screen. Uh, yeah, well, like... Oh, yeah, follow us. Follow us, Track Girl Summer, on Instagram. Follow World's Greatest on Instagram. Follow the Corey Monster. Follow Natasha Hastings. And we'll see y'all tomorrow. Do I turn the camera off? I don't know. Like, <laughs> you're in charge of the camera stuff. I am I here. Like, like I do die. comedic... <laughs>